Next on TCM, Love Story. Then What's Up, Doc? And later, Nickelodeon. Feast your eyes on Ryan O'Neill tonight. Hi there, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Welcome to TCM and a lineup of movies honoring the life and legacy of Ryan O'Neill, who died last December at the age of 82. O'Neill had a reputation as a Hollywood heartthrob on screen, understandable given his level of handsomeness, but that rep tended to mask his enormous talent. O'Neill, equally adept at drama and comedy, achieved his greatest success with a string of top-tier films in the 1970s. While the studios may have been eager to capitalize on O'Neill's good looks, he offered audiences much more than a pretty face and a really solid head of hair. We kick off tonight's tribute with the hit that made Ryan O'Neill a major star, simultaneously rebooting the Hollywood tearjerker for audiences who'd grown accustomed to tougher and grittier fare. From Paramount in 1970, Love Story. O'Neill plays Oliver Barrett IV, a Harvard College student born into a wealthy family. You probably got that from the Oliver Barrett IV bit. The Barretts have lofty expectations for their boy's future. While Oliver's father, played by Ray Milland, pushes him to become a lawyer, Oliver is more interested in hockey. He falls for a girl at Radcliffe, Jenny, a music student from a modest background. She's played by Ally McGraw. Oliver is drawn in by her spirit, her intellect, her spark. Despite their class differences, their love is strong, though it's no fairy tale. The love story script came from Eric Siegel adapting his own novel in a roundabout way. The normal order of creativity is novel and then screenplay adaptation. But Paramount, led by innovative studio boss Robert Evans, had a bold idea here. After Siegel submitted the screenplay, Paramount got him to write a novel based on the script. Then they rushed the novel into publication, releasing it on Valentine's Day. It became a blockbuster, sitting at number one on the New York Times bestseller list for more than 40 weeks. So when the film came out in December, everyone was waiting for the movie version of the hottest book in the country. Allie McGraw, who had just one meaningful credit to her name, Goodbye Columbus, cried reading Siegel's screenplay and brought it to her husband, her new husband. That was the aforementioned Robert Evans, who ran Paramount. Evans thought it was perfect for his wife, this emerging star. But who would co-star opposite her? Ryan O'Neill was not entirely an unknown. He'd spent several years on ABC's primetime soap opera, Peyton Place, and his co-star on that show, Mia Farrow, had already made the leap into films. O'Neill was eager to do the same. He accepted the role after several young actors passed on it, including Robert Redford, Michael York, and Bo Bridges. Love Story earned Ryan O'Neill an Oscar nomination for Best Actor, one of seven for the film, it won for Francis Lay's original score with its melancholy, instantly recognizable theme woven throughout the picture. From 1970, directed by Arthur Hiller, this is Love Story. While some movie critics savaged Love Story, audiences devoured it. The film was a smash hit that brought Paramount back from the brink of financial ruin, earning $130 million, equivalent to nearly a billion dollars today. Ryan O'Neill and Ally McGraw also formed a lifelong friendship. When I interviewed the two stars back in 2021, O'Neill recalled how much fun it was to go to work every day, and romantic, too. O'Neill reprised his role in the ill-fated sequel from 1978, Oliver's Story, which bombed but earned O'Neill a hefty payday. Ally McGraw didn't do the sequel. Who knows why? O'Neill and McGraw finally reunited, this time on stage, for the play Love Letters, in 2016. Coming up, Ryan O'Neill's first film with a director he regarded as his mentor, Peter Bogdanovich. It's a 1972 love letter to Hollywood's golden age of screwball comedies. What's Up, Doc? Co-starring Barbara Streisand and Madeline Kahn is next on TCM. Next on TCM, What's Up, Doc? Then Nickelodeon. And later, Wild Rovers. We ride for Ryan on TCM Tonight. 
Hello, Ben Mankiewicz with you on TCM, where we're spending the evening remembering a Hollywood star who died in December of 2023 after a lengthy battle with leukemia, Ryan O'Neill. Though he'd established himself on the television series Peyton Place in the late 1960s, movie stardom didn't come until 1970 with the picture we just had on TCM, Love Story, alongside Ally McGraw. O'Neill remained a star for the rest of his life, though his sometimes volatile personal life often generated headlines that overshadowed his considerable skill on screen. Up next, O'Neill's prodigious charisma is on full display in a crowd-pleasing throwback to Hollywood's golden age of screwball comedies. This is from Warner Brothers in 1972, directed by Peter Bogdanovich. O'Neill stars opposite Barbara Streisand in What's Up, Doc? Set in San Francisco, the plot centers on a case of mistaken identity. Not a person, but rather four identical red and black plaid overnight bags. O'Neill is Howard Bannister. It's the perfect name for his character, a nerdy scholar who was really into rock music. He's a musicologist who taps actual rocks with a tuning fork to test their tonal qualities. Howard has a fiance, Eunice, who operates at a nuclear level of neurotic. She's played by Madeline Kahn, who we know was always funny, always impossible not to watch, but nobody knew it then. This is Kahn's feature debut. And then there's Barbara Streisand. When she enters the picture, it becomes unforgettable. She's Judy Maxwell, a free spirit who upends the lives of practically everyone who crosses her path, including Howard and Eunice. I'm not sure anyone has appeared more attainably alluring on screen than Barbara Streisand in What's Up, Doc? She's this perfect blend of sexy, dorky, and what? Singularly herself. The scene with Barbara and Ryan in the drugstore, I think, is one of the five funniest scenes in the history of movies. TCM fans will probably pick up on several nods to the screwball comedies of the 1930s and 40s. Director Peter Bogdanovich loved Howard Hawks' 1938 film, Bring It Up Baby, which starred Cary Grant and Katherine Hepburn. To prep for his role in What's Up, Doc, O'Neill went to see Grant to study Grant's mannerisms and style. These spectacular glasses O'Neill wears are a tribute to both Grant's character from Bringing Up Baby and a silent screen comedian Harold Lloyd. You'll also pick up on a moment with O'Neill and Streisand that not too subtly pokes fun at the first feature we brought you tonight, Love Story. This one is from 1972. What's up, Doc? What's Up, Doc? became an unexpected hit at the box office, putting Ryan O'Neill on the radar of a director eager to cast him in an ambitious project. The director was Stanley Kubrick. O'Neill began shooting with Kubrick in 1973, making Barry Lyndon, released in 75. It capped an impressive run of commercial and artistic triumphs for O'Neill over just five years. Though O'Neill's career hit some roadblocks in the years to follow, there remain a pair of intriguing what-ifs, films that, had they been made, might have kept O'Neill on the A-list for decades. In the early 1970s, director Nicholas Rogue wanted O'Neill to co-star with Julie Christie in an adaptation of the book Out of Africa, which would eventually be made by Sidney Pollack as a 1985 Oscar-winning triumph with Robert Redford and Meryl Streep. In the late 1970s, O'Neill was tapped to star opposite Diana Ross in a project that eventually became a 1992 blockbuster hit starring Kevin Costner and Whitney Houston, The Bodyguard. I met Ryan O'Neill, interviewed him about Love Story. I liked him right away. He had the authenticity of a man who had a complicated life and had managed to find his place in it. Coming up. Ryan O'Neill re-teams with director Peter Bogdanovich, as well as O'Neill's daughter and co-star from the film Paper Moon, Tatum O'Neill. It's a nostalgic look at the silent movie era. Nickelodeon is next on TCM. Next on TCM, Nickelodeon, then Wild Rovers, and later, The Thief Who Came to Dinner. O'Neill steals the show on TCM Tonight. Hello, Ben Mankiewicz with you on TCM. Tonight, we're honoring actor Ryan O'Neill, who died last December at the age of 82. While O'Neill's breakout performance in movies came in tonight's first feature, the 1970 drama Love Story, 
Much of his success in the early 70s came through his collaborations with a director who helped define the new Hollywood, Peter Bogdanovich. Bogdanovich, who was such a great friend to TCM, kept his eye firmly on Hollywood's past glory, which factored into all three films Bogdanovich and O'Neill made together. Besides our previous feature, What's Up, Doc?, the pair also made the 1973 comedy Paper Moon, co-starring O'Neill's daughter Tatum in her Oscar-winning screen debut at the age of just nine. Ryan and Tatum O'Neill return for our next feature, the final film, Ryan O'Neill, made with Peter Bogdanovich. From 1976, Nickelodeon. This time, Bogdanovich delivers a love letter to early silent filmmakers and the Nickelodeons, the modest movie houses of the early 1900s that charged audiences five cents to see an afternoon of short films. In those days, the film industry relied on a trust called the Motion Picture Patents Company. It went after those who violated the patents, which were largely owned by Thomas Edison. O'Neill stars as Leo, a divorce lawyer who suddenly finds himself directing short movies for a blustering patent-skirting producer played by Brian Keith. Burt Reynolds is there, too. He becomes their star. Columbia hired Bogdanovich to make Nickelodeon, but Bogdanovich was no longer seen as a bankable Hollywood wonderkind. His previous two pictures, Daisy Miller and At Long Last Love, each bombed at the box office. Bogdanovich wanted to film Nickelodeon in black and white, casting Jeff Bridges and a then unknown John Ritter as the leads. Columbia demanded he shoot in color and use bigger stars. So in came two actors Peter liked very much, Ryan O'Neill and Burt Reynolds. Tatum O'Neill came aboard too. After she won the Best Supporting Actress Oscar for Paper Moon, both she and her dad commanded lucrative salaries. That's not to mention Burt Reynolds. So much so that Columbia had to pull the plug on Nickelodeon until a UK studio, British Lion, came aboard to help finance. John Ritter did ultimately join the cast in a smaller part as O'Neill's cameraman. Here's the film from 1976, Nickelodeon. It's no secret that Ryan O'Neill's relationship with his daughter Tatum O'Neill, both of whom you just saw in Nickelodeon, was stormy. Realistically, there was probably no way for the young actress to return to the normal life of an adolescent after winning an Oscar for Paper Moon. She made the movie at nine, won the Oscar at 10. Ryan O'Neill felt that their success in the movies harmed their relationship, saying that it can create a kind of chaos in the home front, certainly did in our house. Father and daughter were often estranged, but attempted to work through their difficulties in a 2011 TV reality show, which might not have been the best idea. The O'Neills embarked on a series of awkward, uncomfortable interviews to promote it. Ryan later said the experience may have actually made their relationship worse. Nevertheless, Tatum noted that the two were at a good place at the time of her father's death, telling People magazine, I loved him very much. And I know he loved me, too. Ryan O'Neill had four children, one of whom has appeared on screen more than anyone else in the family. Patrick O'Neill has been a successful sports broadcaster in Southern California for close to two decades, mostly hosting pre- and post-game shows for the Los Angeles Kings and the Los Angeles Angels. Patrick played an instrumental role in getting his father and Ryan O'Neill's love story co-star, Ali McGraw, a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2021. Coming up, a pair of cowboys turned to something more lucrative than herding cattle, bank robbing. Ryan O'Neill co-stars with William Holden in the 1971 Western Wild Rovers, directed by Blake Edwards. It is next on Turner Classic Movies. Next on TCM, Wild Rovers. Then the thief who came to dinner and later, Cairo. TCM is in denial tonight. The TCM Classic Film Festival rounds up cinephiles most wanted. John Travolta lights up the big house for opening...